Previously on the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And that should do it. There we go. And the boss is beaten. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be here all day. I sign autographs. I sing songs. I make balloon animals. And I touch your girlfriend's bum. You only squished three spiders. Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Jeff, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. In the last episode, I did some cool tricks like that, except over a log. And we beat Queen Goma, and basically I accidentally ended up skipping the whole, like, Mido scene where he basically gets really pissy and really bitchy and is like, Oh my god, you killed the Deku tree? And I'm like, dude, I didn't kill him. Ganoncore. Blah, blah. The spoilers, <laughs> the guy in black killed him, and this is Roxas guy, but he's all like, Mido's mad, so he's not humping his rocks. Uh, but we don't really need to deal with that. All we need to do is party, and by party I mean go out this thing. <laughs> And we have a cutscene where I get to voice act Saria very badly, so prepare. Oh, you're leaving? Well, that's horrible. That's not even sad. That's not even sad. That's bad. <laughs> I knew that you would leave the forest someday, Jeff. Because you were different from me and my friends. But that's okay. Because we'll be friends forever, won't we? I want you to have this ocarina. Please take good care of it. Dum, 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 dum. No music. The things. You've received the fairy ocarina. This is a memento from Saria. Set it to C and press C to start playing it. On the select item subscreen, you can set it to any of the C buttons and then use that same button that you selected it to because that's common knowledge to start playing it. You can play different notes with A and the four C buttons. I thought you had to press my penis. Press B to quit playing or start your song over again. I, that's really bad. I don't know where that came from. When you play my ocarina, I hope that you'll think of me and come back to the forest to visit. I completely got out of character too. Now this scene always bugged me because Link just like randomly backs up like this like he's scared of Saria but I think he's just scared of the situation because he doesn't know what to do because he's still a kid and so he doesn't really know how to handle the emotions of the situation so instead of handling them the correct way he just runs the fuck away and it's like okay if you're a kid that's cool but you're the hero of time so it's like yeah anyway this is Hyrule Field so welcome to like what is basically the hub of the game that connects everything to everything although there are little shortcuts that connect other places to other places as well um, we're about to get introduced to what m people call the most annoying character in the game. I just had a really weird voice thing where I was like, it was like almost a lisp-like thing. But anyway, some people do this little trick where they can skip him, and I almost did it. But anyway, hoot hoot, Jeff, look up here, and that's about all I'm gonna read. Um, basically, Kapora Gabora is a guide, but as you go along and you play other Zelda games, you come to find that he's actually the embodiment of, I forget exactly who it was, but he's basically like an embodiment of a sage or a spirit that knows everything. So he's kind of a cool character, but the way they used him in this game is kind of stupid. Whereas, I'm lisping, that's what it is. I'm lisping. I am. I have a lisp, apparently. <laughs> anyway, that's really weird. But, um, basically, he ha yeah, you want to select yes to this one, but no to everything else. Because in the other ones, he asks if you want to repeat it. And a hootie hoo to you too, by the way, because he's an owl. Now, I want to take a time, a time, a time, a time, a time, a time. Uh, actually, I'll go and kill that thing later. Um, actually, no, I'll go kill it now, because a lot of people get freaked out by these things, and they don't really understand them. And so, I want to take some time to actually show the fact that you can kill these things very easily, and with very little trouble. A lot of people get scared of them, and as a kid, I did too. I was seriously one of those little kids who was like, Oh my god, what is that thing? Run away from it! Instead of, oh my god, what is that thing? I'm curious, let me battle it. Um, so instead, yeah, I ran away from it as a kid. So, that sucked. Um, I should have gotten the bullet seed upgrade in the Kakiri Forest, but you know what? I can get it later, because I'm going back there anyway, eventually. Spoilers. Uh, so anyway, hope you guys are doing alright. I recorded this earlier, but then I had to re-record it because my HD PBR was like, Hey guys, when you turn off a certain light switch in my room, I'm gonna desync your video because apparently that's how my electrical wires are working. So that's great, and I have electrical issues. And now, this is something that always freaked me out as a kid too. 
Um, it's like it's nighttime, right? And you're thinking, oh, look, it's a casual stroll along Hyrule Field at night. Well, oh, look, the path is broken. I'm going to walk on it. And then you're like, oh, my God, what the fuck are these things? And then I just beheaded one, which is really freaking creepy. Um, and they try to hit you, and I'm, oh, man, see, in the last, thing I, last time I didn't get hit. Um, but these are style children, and basically they're the skeletons of children. Uh, which is really weird, and you kind of have to wonder, like, you know there was a war in Hyrule, and I don't know, I'm one for, like, all those, like, alternate universe type things, so it's like, there was a war in Hyrule, right? So you have to wonder, like, where did these come from? I wonder how these got here. And then you're like, oh man, maybe there were a bunch of children that got killed in the war, and these are the bodies of them that are haunting Hyrule Field. Like, fuck, that's fucked up. Um, if you kill enough of them, yeah, here he is. Big Boy comes out to play, and he, he has the same amount of health uh, as his little friends, but he was probably like the bully of the group. I like beheading them, and they run around without heads. They're like chickens. They are like chickens, except there's not, they're not chickens, because there actually are chickens in this game, but they're called cuckoos, because I'm cuckoo for Coco Pops! Get out of my way! Motherfucker! And if you do that, he's like, oh, show me your moves! And then I did. <laughs> I killed him. And now it's daytime! So, anyway, yeah, I'm definitely much better off in this uh, recording than I was last time. I want to show you something really cool. If you come up here, um, you can walk up here like an Egyptian and then jump off and... What the fuck? <laughs> I totally just, um, just did a glitch. Like, not a glitch, but it's like... I forget what it's called. It's, um, something involving swords and a jump, and now I have to get out of here, and that's rather annoying. There's a secret grotto over there. We'll get something later in the game. Well, I think once we get 20 Skullchilla tokens, that will allow us to detect where secret grottos actually are located, which is kind of cool that they did that, but it was mostly built for the Rumble Pack feature. Um, there may be a Skullchilla in one of these trees, but I'm not sure if it's these trees or if it's another pair of trees that I'm thinking of. I got some nuts out of the trees. It is pollinating season. Um... Anyway, so, yeah. I wonder if there's anything that's been interesting going on in my life lately that I want to talk about. I'm not sure. Um, I am in the process of registering for housing on campus, which is really cool. Um, I'm going to have my own room, my own, like, big living room, and I'm only going to be living with, like, two people. And in here, there's a bunch of pots. No, I don't mean the drugs, although this guy could be mistaken for a drug dealer the way he's in here with all these pots. No, I kid, I kid. But, um, or do I? I don't know, he becomes a dealer of something later on, that's all I'm saying, and he foreshadows it too, um, which is kind of cool that they have a bunch of foreshadowing in this game if you look for it. Uh, those pots up there can only be reached, I believe, if you have your boomerang, because that's how I did it uh, when I was like little, when I was younger, as a youth, a spry youth, spry, spry youth. I forget where that came from. Maybe it was one of my ex-girlfriends that said it, but anyway, in one of these boxes, in this box, to the left, to the left, I talk to you. Um, so basically, he's like, I'm so bored, things would be more interesting if there were more troubles in the world. And, um, so basically, yeah, that's a foreshadowing. And this is gonna be our fourth Skullchilla token. See, I knew there was a point of bringing you in here. That is the fourth spider we have squished out of a hundred. We are effectively, uh, two-fiftieths of the way through the game, which would end up being, like, one-twenty-fifth, I believe. One-twenty-fifth? One-twenty-fifth. Which is, yeah, that's a very low percentage. But anyway, apparently you can pull your sword out in the market, but that's not socially acceptable anymore. Just saying. I can't pick up... Wow, that literally shook the whole town. Look at that. That shook the whole town. I can cause earthquakes. I'm a boss. Um, alright, so let me just show you around the town. Actually, we need to talk to Malin first. Malin. Hey, your clothes, they're different. You're not from around here. That's a horrible voice. I just want to redo that. Oh, you're a fairy boy from the forest. My name is Malin. My dad owns Lon Lon Ranch. That's not her voice either. Dad went to the castle to deliver some milk, and yet he hasn't come back yet. There we go. Got it. She should have a British voice, kind of like, um, like Amy Pond, which, if I have any Doctor Who fans, the, uh, ending, so sad. Anyway, this is the Happy Mask Shop, and, um, so basically... I forget when you can do this, but, uh, what a strange shop. I wonder when it'll be open for business. I read the sign there, but it still seems weird. And, you know, if you play Majora's Mask, Happy Mask Salesman's, like, one of the main antagonists, or you could consider him a protagonist, um, of that game, depending on how you look at that game. This is the potion shop, or the apothecary, if you're medieval. And, uh, yeah, this is the bazaar. Bazaar, bazaar, 
Um, bazaar. Yeah, it's a market. Anyway, it sells things that we can't buy yet. Actually, we can go ahead and buy a Hylian Shield, which is actually going to be really useful. So, you know what? We can take care of that, because that's something I need to do. Uh, before the next... The, the next... The next dungeon. There we go. I found the word. After making weird cat noises. And, uh, pretty much there's a gathering over here, and I forget exactly what it's for. Hey, have you heard that Princess Zelda sees prophetic fa 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 I guess maybe he's like a truth teller, but anyway, okay, and that door right there to the left is the truth game, basically the truth game. It's called the treasure box game, but yeah. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and play some mini games here, because I wanna upgrade. Let me, let me upgrade you, I'm gonna upgrade my bag while I do this. Um... Yes, I do want to upgrade it. Oh, I don't have enough rupees, you little butt munch. Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead, and it needs to be nighttime, so I'm gonna cut ahead. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I lied. I lied to you all. I am a big, fat, stinking, dirty sack of shit liar. Uh, that's really not becoming of myself, I suppose. But, whatever. It's the truth, because I lied to you, because I need to do something like talk to this freaking... Dude, dude, get your, your head get your head on straight. Get it? Get your head on straight, because he's crazy, he's an owl, and he has his head upside down, and I just make the worst jokes in the world. Um, but I should... Dude, I should no I don't cuz he just he just basically talks about not getting caught by the guards and then the fact that there's a big old rock to the right over there and then he's like I think he said something about that and then he talks about Zelda but anyway I need to roll into this thing um, and hopefully it doesn't fall on top of me because this is gonna be our fifth Skullchilla token which is awesome you destroyed a gold Skullchilla and now I will see you guys when it's nighttime nobody likes you guard Roll, roll, roll your link gently down the stream. Hello, guys. The guards just looked at me like I'm crazy. It's nighttime, just in case you couldn't tell. And now Malin's here, and we need to talk to her. Are you going to the castle, fairy boy? Would you mind finding my dad? He must have fallen asleep somewhere around the castle. What a thing for an adult to do. Oh, yeah, if you look for him, I'll give this to you. I've been incubating this egg very carefully. And so we got the weird egg, because if we weren't as weird before, we are weird now. Feels like there's something moving inside. That's what she said. Again, that was a horrible joke. And anyway. Yeah, someone mentioned that I made a joke about a prostitute, and then said it was a horrible joke, and I didn't actually mean to make that pun. Like, that was definitely not, it was definitely a double entendre there, because I did not mean to make the pun about being a whore. But I thought it was really funny that someone pointed that out, and I was actually, like, clever enough to point it out. And I was like, hey, that's actually pretty clever. Ha, huh, you're cool. Uh, so anyway, if you, the best way to get around the guards is to go up this little angled incline here and not roll into that tree as much as I would want to. Um, I know there's a Skullchilla around here some... Maybe there's a Skullchilla around here somewhere. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the Skullchillas are the one thing that I have, like, the... Um, I guess you would say the most trouble with in this game. I'm not, you know, like 100%. I, I, I'm probably going to need a guide for some of them, basically. But, yeah, other than the Skullchillas and, and kind of the heart pieces to an extent. But, um, anyway, if you want to go around... Oh, you little son of a bitch! I was so close, too. If it weren't for you and you meddling guards... Hey you guys, just wanted to show you that little trick if you lead a, um, come here little fairy, I want to love you. Thank you. If you lead a butterfly away with the Deku stick, it will turn into a fairy, which is actually pretty cool. Not a lot of people know that trick. Some people do. A lot of people tell you it's the, uh, you have to get the butterfly to land on the stick, but it just has to be led away from its little nesting grounds, if you will. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Let's Play Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like. It really does help if you do. And uh, be sure to share it with your friends because, you know, word of mouth is great. And in the next episode, we're going to figure out what the hell is inside those castle walls. So I'll see you guys then.